Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this video we are going to work on our Mastering Lightroom series by diving into the adjustment brushes and really showing you some tips and tricks that you can use when editing with the local adjustments to get the very best possible results in your editing and save you a ton of time in your workflow. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, so in front of me, I have three photos we are going to be going through together today, and I would love it if you would actually edit with me. So I am leaving the link to download these from my website in the description below. So just look in the comments or in the description, it will be there, and you can download these photos and edit alongside of me. I find it really helpful if you're actually able to go in and do this for yourself. You're going to learn a lot more and remember a lot more of what you learn. Okay, with that aside, let's go ahead and dive into our adjustment brush. So in case adjustment brushes are pretty new to you, we'll spend just a minute going over the basic functions. You get to them by going to the develop panel where you edit your photos, open up the adjustment brushes by clicking on this little icon that looks kind of like a brush but really doesn't. That's okay, we won't worry about that too much. And here we have this effects panel that lets us adjust the settings of our effect and then the brush settings which lets us adjust the settings of our brush obviously. So we've got our size, which is pretty self-evident how large that brush is going to be when we paint it onto our image. Then we've got the feather, which is how hard or soft the boundary of that brush is going to be. Zero is very, very hard. 100 is very, very soft. And flow, which is how much of that effect comes out right away. So if it's at, let's say, 100, well then your effect is going to be very, very strong right away at 100% opacity. If it's at, let's say, 10, well, then it's going to be 10%. And then if you go over it a second time, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, right? So depending on how strong you want your effect to be and how gradual you want to paint things in, you might adjust these accordingly. So most of you probably already know those kind of basic settings. What we're going to be going over in particular is the keyboard shortcuts and kind of workflow hacks for actually editing more efficiently with the adjustment brush because it's really, really easy to get caught up taking a ton of time making really super simple changes to your brushes and to your settings. So let's go over a couple of possibilities here. The first thing is going to be the keyboard shortcuts for adjusting the size, feather, flow and auto mask of your brush. So the size of your brush doesn't have to be adjusted using this panel. And the same thing goes for almost everything in Lightroom. There's most often a keyboard shortcut that can help you do it faster. And if there is, you should try and learn it. Because if you're adjusting your image here, and let's say I need to adjust the size of my brush and I come over here and make it a little bigger. And it's like, oh, that's too big. And I go back here and make it smaller. That's a really, really long process. It's going to take you a lot longer to edit your images than is necessary. Now, if you just use your mouse, if you have a click wheel on your mouse, you can make your brush bigger and smaller just by using that little wheel. Way faster, way more efficient. Now, if you're on a computer with a trackpad, you can do the same thing by swiping up and down on that trackpad. On a Mac, it's with two fingers, just up or down, adjust the brush size. Now, the same thing goes actually with our feather, which is super, super handy. Holding down shift on our keyboard and doing the exact same thing, whether it's on a mouse click wheel or on your trackpad, going up or down will adjust the size of that feather, which is great because you can go from a really small feather, and then if you need to kind of gradually reduce that effect, just increase the feather a little bit using that shortcut, and you don't have to go over to the sidebar and adjust it every time you need to. Super quick and super handy. Now, lastly, going on to our auto mask, we can adjust this without having to click it on and off. And this is one of those features that is really kind of hidden inside of Lightroom, but is super quick and handy to know. Now, instead of going over and turning on the auto mask, and then let's say masking out the white parts of these waves, I can actually just turn that off and hold down command on my keyboard and do the exact same thing. It will automatically toggle on the auto mask. And then when I'm done auto masking and I want to just paint normally, I can let go of command on my keyboard and just paint as normally. And if I want to switch back to auto mask, hold down command again and I can just auto mask whatever I need to. So that will save you a ton of time. Now I should also mention, in case you're wondering why is his brush green, how does he get that effect? That's simply by pressing O on my keyboard, which will show the mask overlay. And you can even change the uh, color of that mask overlay by holding shift and then pressing O. So you can cycle because sometimes it's going to be better to see one color as an overlay than the other based on the colors of your image. So for example, on this particular image, it's not too hard to see the green overlay. But if this was green grass instead of a blue ocean, it might be easier to actually change my overlay to red. So I just hold shift and press O to cycle between the colors that are kind of the 
best for that situation. So that's just the overlay. And if you want to hide that overlay and just see what your effects are doing, hit O again, and you can hide that. We'll just reset our effects. Let's say we want to make this ocean a little bit more blue. We can do that just by lowering the white balance. So that's how I would do that. Now let's practice this together before we move on and kind of dive into some use cases here. So first, what I want you to do is just grab this image or grab a different image. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is that you actually apply this, try it for yourself so that you can start remembering and just committing these different shortcuts to your memory. It's going to make a huge difference in your workflow. So so first off, let's start by just auto masking this white area here in the waves like I showed you before. So all we have to do is just change the size of our brush. It doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to go with about that size. And holding down command, I will just select a point to click and that will help Lightroom decide what I'm trying to auto mask. So whatever is at the very center of my selection, see the cross hairs in between uh, kind of this brush circle, that little cross T in the middle is the point that is going to be used to select for the auto mask. And I wasn't holding command there, so it didn't auto mask. Let's just undo that. Command Z or Control Z on a PC, holding command, and then I'm just going to select white parts of these waves. And you'll see that if I were to accidentally, let's say, go with some of the sand here instead of the waves, it'll do a bad job with the auto mask. It won't mask the proper thing because the kind of point that it's drawing that auto mask from is a different color. So when auto mask is working, it's looking for a point that is similar in color and in contrast to that which it's sampling from. So if it's clicked on something blue, it's going to look for other areas of the image that are blue. If it's clicked on something orange, it's going to look for other areas of the image in my selection that are orange and try and kind of mask around that. I hope that explanation makes sense. If it doesn't, the main thing is just practice it for yourself and you'll be able to get kind of a grasp on it much better than I can explain right here. Now, what I want to kind of give you as a tip is when you're actually doing this auto mask, doing so by just going to different points and clicking one at a time, I find to be more effective than if I were to just try and follow the waves here by holding and clicking my mouse. You'll see that I just don't get as clean of a result overall. It's going to start masking more than I want to. Whereas if I were to do just one point at a time holding command, just click, find another point, this white here, click, click. Overall, it tends to be a little bit more accurate. So you can just play around. Your results may vary. Once we've masked that, we can just reset our effects here. Holding Alt on our keyboard will allow us to pull up this reset panel button. Hit that. And so we still have our mask. If we hit the O key, we can see our overlay. So hit the O, you can see your overlay. Hit it again to hide that, and then we can just adjust the waves as we need to. Let's make them a little bit brighter so they just pop out. You can see what a big difference that makes to the image. Here's before, and here's after. Right? That might be a little too far. Let's pull it back. And now let's mask out the ocean. Let's make it a little bit more blue and saturated. So we'll do the same thing. I'm going to start by just taking my feather down. So I'll hold shift on my keyboard and then drag up and down on my trackpad or on my mouse wheel. And then from there, I let go of shift and I can paint this in. I'm going to press O so I can see my overlay and realize that I didn't make a new mask. So let's just undo that. Go over here where it says new. And now I'm painting a brand new adjustment brush mask. Perfect. So I'll put that in there, reduce the feather so I can get closer to the edge without worrying about bleeding over onto the waves. And the reason I'm doing this is because the auto mask itself doesn't um, always do such a good job at solid areas. So for example, let me just show you. I'll delete this. Holding down command, if I were to try and auto mask this area, you can see that it hasn't really masked all of the water. It has certain areas that it's left out. And that really isn't very good if we want to affect the entire area. So it's better just to normally paint that so that you have 100% coverage on the areas that you want to have covered. And then for the boundaries, that's where you use the auto mask and where it comes in real handy. So we'll hold command now and click here on the water. Let's turn our flow up. Just click on the different points. Perfect. And if you find the mask is not working so well, just try undoing it. So this one extended right onto the beach, so that didn't work so well. Let's try a different point here. You can see it did a little bit of a better job with the auto mask. So if it's not doing so well, just undo it and find a different reference point for it to draw from. And then we're going to clean it up by holding option and then command to kind of auto mask erase the areas of the sand here and the waves that we don't want to have masked. Now one thing to note, the more intensive an effect you're intending to apply to an image, the more careful you have to be with your mask. And likewise, if you're just doing a really kind of subtle change to your image, you really don't need to worry so much about getting a perfect boundary on your mask. So for example, if I were just trying to add a little bit of contrast to these waves, maybe increase the highlights and the exposure just a little bit, well that's great, but I don't need to be so careful about the mask. So I could probably just go in here and in two seconds just do one of these, and you can see my mask is super sloppy, but that's okay because I'm just doing a little bit of increase in exposure, a little contrast, little highlights. You're really not going to see that I affected the image at all. 
Maybe down here we could erase, be a little more careful than that. But you get my point. You don't need to worry about getting an exact mask. Whereas, let's just go back here before we deleted our nice auto mask. Hello. So we've got it right here. If we wanted to do a more intense effect, like change the temperature of the water, well then it's going to be very important that we have our mask perfect or else this effect is going to be really obvious that it wasn't kind of natural. You can see down here that things aren't blended in properly so I'd have to be much more careful with my mask if I wanted to pull off this kind of an effect. So we'll just dial this back and because our mask is reasonably accurate we can get away with quite a bit. We could add maybe some more green to the water. We could even go down to this color tab. And this is something people don't make use of all that often. You can actually add a tint to your image as well. And if you want to change the color of whatever it is you're masking completely, you can do that by taking the saturation, take that all the way down, go over to the color and just grab the color that you want to replace it with. So you'll see that some show up in a more intense hue than others. So this red really isn't that strong, whereas the blue and the green is very, very strong. So if we wanted to make it a solid red ocean, we'd have to make multiple layers. So we can just right click our adjustment and we can go duplicate. And again, depending on whether you are very familiar with adjustment brushes or not, you might not even be aware you can duplicate them. But you can. So there you go. Now the only thing is with our duplicates, we'd want to be making sure that all we're doing is duplicating the actual color and not the entire mask. So let me just back up here. This is our first one. Now when we duplicate it, we're going to want to make sure that we actually uh, zero out the rest of these effects. So we'll just double click on each of these settings just to reset them back to zero so that we're affecting nothing except for adding extra red to our mask. Now we'll duplicate that. We'll get a much more pronounced color without affecting the contrast and the exposure every time we duplicate it. So that's how you would do that. Obviously, this is not necessarily my idea of the perfect edit, just a little far off from natural. But the point of this is just to mess around and see what you can do and kind of get used to using these tools and these shortcuts. It's going to save you a ton of time. So now that we've got our beautiful red ocean, let's make the sand green. We'll do the same thing. Go to a new brush and then we will hold down the command key to turn on auto mask. Press O to see our overlay. And we'll auto mask this sand. You can see it hasn't done quite the best job with this auto mask. We might have to come in here and mess around a little bit more. But for the sake of this demo, we'll just kind of skip the fine tuning here. Now I'll just add some green and we'll do the exact same thing. We'll grab our color, bring it up to green, and take our saturation down and press O so that we hide our overlay. If you ever find that your adjustments aren't doing anything, it might be because you have the overlay turned on by mistake. And you can see we have a nice green patch of sand. Maybe it's a golf course. Okay, and we have the world's best photo of a beach. I think you can agree with me there. So let's move on into some other image examples and kind of work through these tools and show you a few other things. And before we keep going, if this has been helpful for you so far, do me a huge favor, hit that like button and make sure to subscribe for future updates and tutorials and leave me a comment below. I would love it. It helps the YouTube algorithm and it's just is doing me a favor. So if I'm helping you out, help me out too. Okay, let's head over into this next image and we'll start by just masking out the sky, adding a little bit of color and hopefully recovering some of these highlights. So the first thing that I normally like to do actually is to close the adjustment brush. And before I start editing and trying to get color back into an image, it's good just to take my exposure and turn it down and see if there is any color to recover. You can see that mm, even if I were to take this down and I were to mask it perfectly, I still wouldn't get a lot of saturation out of it. I could try increasing the contrast, the saturation, the vibrance, but I still don't really like the color of this. So in the end, I might wind up taking this into Photoshop and doing a sky replacement. But for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just stick in Lightroom and see what we can do. Let's head back over to our adjustment brush. Now that we know what's possible, I'm thinking I'm probably going to wind up adding some color in to this area. And I'm going to take my adjustment brush, hold down command, and just auto mask out the sky. Hit O so I can see what my mask is actually doing here. And it's not doing much because my flow is all the way down. So I'll just try that again, hold command. You can see it's masked out the sky pretty nicely. Now, press O again, and we can take our exposure down. And I'm going to take it really, really far down just to make sure that my mask is looking nice and it's blending in well. And you can see that there's this weird band right over here. It's very obvious when we actually make intense effects happen. Like I said, you need to be very careful with your masks and get very accurate if you're trying to make big changes. And since I'm going to make a pretty radical change to the sky by adding color to it, I'm going to want to make sure I refine this mask. So I've set my zoom to 4 to 1, and that way I can get really up close and work on this little banded area. I'm not going to be able to auto mask this, I don't think, because even if I press command right on that little band, 
yeah, it's not going to do it very well. So I'm going to have to do this manually, take my flow down, make my brush a little bit smaller here, a lot a bit smaller, and I'm just going to follow along this band and just ever so slowly fix it. So you can see I'm not doing a very good job here. You want to take your time on this image. If you're trying to do an intense effect, it's going to just take the time to blend this properly or it will never look realistic. It'll look super fake and super weird. So we just gotta blend this in here. And I could turn my flow up maybe a little bit. That's fine. Now of course this is a very hard line that's happening here so I might have to just turn my feather up, make the brush a little bit bigger and do one of these. But that's probably a little bit too, ah, too feathery. So let's hold shift, make my feather a little smaller again here. Just refine that mask. And it doesn't matter so much if I'm perfectly following the border because since this is zoomed in so far, when we zoom out, you're not actually going to see that that's not perfectly following the border of the sand as long as it's not too jagged like this area right here. So we zoom back in. And I'm not going to make you watch me do this entire mask. You can just do this for yourself. You go through and just roughly follow the edge of this area. Now, certain areas you're going to have to be very accurate, like in here and turn your flow down so it's not as obvious as that. So we just take that flow, turn it down, go back in here, and patience will pay off for you. You can see if I zoom out here, this area that I fixed looks much, much better than this area over here, which the auto mask just didn't get. Now, another thing is that the auto mask, it looks like, didn't fully grab this area of the image either. So I'm going to go over here with just a normal brush, take my flow all the way up, just make sure that these areas are totally masked. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, so let's reset these effects. And we're going to take our exposure down just a little bit. Contrast up maybe a little. We could even try dehaze, see if that does anything. That's added some nice color to the image, but it also is exaggerating the fact that our mask isn't perfect. So you need to work on that for sure in order to pull this off. So we'll dial that back to where it looks normal-ish. And then we'll grab a color and maybe add some pink and blue to the sky. So we can do that here. Find something we think looks nice and then kind of dial it in the amount that looks natural. So take that, maybe just, just a touch like that. And lastly, we could maybe take our temperature down, add some blue to the sky, take our tint up, add some pink to the sky. So we've gone from this to this, added some nice color. And of course, you'll need to work on your mask to make sure it blends in nicely. Now one last thing, we could take our flow feather up, and we could do just a very, like, kind of super gradual, like the sky is leaking over the mountains in the distance. I think we can kind of get away with that, and it will help our mask a little. Press O if you want to see what you're doing. You can see I'm just blending a little bit of that mask onto these mountains, kind of to make that boundary a little less obvious. Okay, I think that looks okay. Here's before and after. Last thing I'm going to do is take my exposure back up just so that the sky is still the brightest part of the image because that is kind of how real life works. You want to make sure you get your brightnesses dialed in. Otherwise, your colors will feel off. So if I make this brighter so that the sky is the brightest part of the image, it feels a lot more natural overall. Okay, let's move on into our sand dunes here. I think it'd be really cool to exaggerate one half of them and also a good exercise just for practicing with our auto mask and brush tool. So we'll go to our um, adjustment brush, hit new, and we're going to just brush out kind of the right side of these sand dunes. So I'm holding Command here, and I'm just going to click, press O, so I can see my adjustment brush. And of course, my flow is so low, it's not showing up. So let's try this again. Perfect, just clicking here, following around. And what I want to do is just grab kind of the highlights of this particular dune, and then we'll erase it off of this side. Holding Option, perfect. Hold Option, Command, and I can try and follow this line of contrast here. Perfect. Okay. And then I'm going to just paint all over this. I don't need to be too careful because there's no boundary. Holding shift, grab my feather, bring that down so I can just paint right up here into the skyline. And then to refine that, I'm just going to hold command and click here on the mountains. Great. So that's masked that out there. And I'm just going to follow this probably up until kind of this dune right here. So I'll hold Command. That didn't do such a good job. We'll undo, make my brush a little bit smaller, and try again. Still not doing a great job with the auto mask here. So let's zoom in. And we'll just erase this out of here. Hold Command and Option. Great. 
and then try painting it in again, holding Command. And Lightroom's just going to look for a line of contrast, which hopefully it will find in this dune. Sometimes it doesn't work so well for you. So we might again have to do this manually. We'll see. Let's try here one more time. That's going to be close enough for me. For my purposes, just click in here. Okay, not too bad. And I want to probably follow this top line over into the shadow area of this. So we'll just do the same thing, holding Command, just clicking on the shadows. You can see it's it's still masked part of the upper part of this, but it's done a deeper mask, kind of 100% opacity down here in the shadows, maybe 20% up here on the highlights. So that's okay with me. And of course, we're going to erase this out of here. Hold Option. Erase that. Hold Command. It'll switch to Auto Mask. And kind of follow the area of these highlights. Something like that. So of course, I'm not going to make you watch me, you know, spend an hour on this mask. So we're not going to be too, too fussy or careful, but when you're practicing it for yourself, just go ahead. Just play around. See what you need to do to really blend it in. Make your feather bigger here, maybe. Blend things. And again, the accuracy of your mask really just depends on how intense you're going to make your effect. So this might be perfectly fine for our purposes. Let's find out. So I've missed this one section. We'll just finish that off here. Grab that. Just click in here and erase, hold Option, Command. Okay, we're going to say that's good enough for our purposes. Although this is really sloppy, so it's killing me. I can't get away with that. Okay, press O to hide that. And now what I'm going to do is just exaggerate the texture on this right half of the image. Clarity, and maybe bring the highlights up. I know this looks totally silly. Sometimes I find it just helpful to overdo the effect and then dial it back after. Then we can grab our exposure and maybe turn it down on this side of the image. Or we could try the other way and make this part of the image bright and this part of the image dark. I think it kind of looks better with it darker. You can see we've added a lot of contrast and pop to the image by doing that. Bring my texture back down to kind of a bearable normal level. Maybe even add a little bit of dehaze. Something like that. A little saturation. Maybe even a little warmth. We could try something like that. We'll warm it up. And now we'll mask the other side of our image. So we'll do a new brush. Same thing, and I'm not going to spend too much time here because you kind of get the drill at this point. Press O so I can see what I'm doing. Turn my flow up. Great. Just painting on here. And one thing to be aware of is if you're using the auto mask a lot, it's going to definitely slow down your actual editing. So Lightroom is kind of keeping track of all of those different reference points that you grabbed while you were doing the auto masking. And so it's going to slow down as it grabs more of those to remember and keep track of. So if you want to maximize your Lightroom kind of speed and editing, only use auto masking when you really have to. The rest of the time, just do plain old fashioned manual. It's going to be a lot faster. Okay, holding option. You can practice doing the same thing with this image or with a different image, doesn't matter to me. The end result is the same. You can see I have kind of the apple wheel of death happening, so hopefully we don't crash here. Let's just finish this off. Hopefully it will do a decent job. Let's pretend like that was a really accurate mask. It's, it's not quite done. Holding command here, we're just going to follow the line. You can see Lightroom is really dragging behind us, but that's all right. Command click, command click. Okay, so other than this one area here, which I'm erasing, and this ridge, which needs some cleaning up, we're looking not too, too bad. So you can see, when you're working with adjustment brushes, you kind of have to take your time on certain things, but you need to know what to take your time on and what not really to bother with. So if I was only doing a small effect here, I wouldn't worry about getting this line exactly right. I would just dial it in, do it really quickly, and be done. Move on to the next image. But if I want to do something more intense, like change the color of this and make this blue and this orange, well, then it's going to have to be really accurate. You're going to notice. Okay, so I think it's actually kind of cool to do sort of a split toning effect. We're going to start by just darkening this side of the image. Brighten this side instead. I know we darkened it before. But you can see you got a lot of different kind of options involved here. 
when you have these masks and you separate parts of your image, you can do just different creative things. Whether or not you think this is kind of a good look, uh, there's just a lot of creative options that you can mess around with. So we're going to do kind of a split toning. Let's maybe do like a kind of purpley blue to match our sky. And then grab that, bring it down so we don't have quite so much going on. So we can do something like this, lower the exposure of the entire image. And all of a sudden we kind of have this dreamy sort of dual tone effect. And of course I go into the sky here and maybe I would duplicate this layer. So we'll duplicate. And then on the duplicate, I'm going to erase this part of the image, this part of the mask, and just leave it on this side because this side needs to be darkened down a little bit more. So I'm going to erase, hold alt, somewhere around there, turn my feather all the way up, turn my flow on my eraser down. And then I'm just going to blend this in by erasing, kind of gradually blending in that effect. Press O again so I can see what's going on. And then I'm just going to grab my exposure and bring it down on that side of the sky. Perfect. Blend it a little bit more. You can see we've added some nice color to the sky, kind of matches what's going on in the shadows here. And we kind of get a pleasing, cohesive effect by having the colors play well together. Now, again, this is still a mess of an edit. It's nowhere near done and nowhere near what I think is perfection, but it gives you an example of some things that you can do creatively with the adjustment brushes and hopefully helps you practice when it comes to using AutoMask and knowing when and where to use it and adjusting your brush size and your feather size, everything like that. Let's look at one last example here, which is this beautiful portrait. All right, so there's a lot going on in this portrait that we could address, different things that we could do, but I just want to show you one last thing with the adjustment brushes that you might not be aware of, and that is the power of the shift key, which isn't much of a power, but it's kind of a neat little trick. If we zoom in here, let's say we wanted to mask out something straight in our image, like these uh, posts, pillars. <laughs> We're going to zoom in here, go to the very top of the pillar, make sure our brush is set to the right size, and if you click once, that kind of forms the first point of our adjustment brush mask. Let's try that again with the flow up. Click once. And if I hold shift and then click somewhere else, it will actually make a straight line between those two points. So in this case, it looks like our post isn't perfectly straight, so that didn't quite work. But for architecture and for masks that are perfectly straight, it can save you a lot of time just doing something like that. So that's an example of the shift key. Now one last thing that we could maybe do in here is just address um, the green in these plants. So I'm going to take my brush here, just do a really rough job, brushing the areas I know are going to be just 100% brushed, and then we'll do auto mask on the rest. So we'll grab that area, perfect. Now holding command, we can just start grabbing some sample points, and you can see that didn't work so well. So we might need to use smaller sample points here. Just go around and slowly brush all of this green. Now the reason that it's not picking up the entire amount of green at one time is because the point that it's grabbing it from, there's a lot of different colors going on in these leaves and so, and there's also a lot of different lines of contrast. So it's going to take a few more clicks to actually get this mask dialed in than if everything was the same color or if there wasn't as much contrast and just different textures going on. Okay. Perfect. Now let go of command and I could just clean up my mask in the areas that it didn't quite grab things. Just go over here, over here. So hopefully you're getting the hang of this by now just using the O key to adjust your overlay and Alt key toggle between the brush and the eraser. Turn my flow back up on the eraser. Great. Adjust your size, adjust your feather. Very handy things, and it's going to speed up your editing so much. Trust me, you want to practice this, because if you just say, oh, this is a cool tutorial, I'm definitely going to use this, and then you don't actually apply it, trust me, you are going to forget about it. I speak from personal experience, watching lots of Lightroom tutorials in the past and saying, oh, this is so cool, and then totally forgetting and wasting hours and hours of editing that I needn't have wasted. Okay, so that's okay. This is maybe a little bit messy. But now that we have that, we can grab our greens, take the exposure down, and fun fact for you, as you decrease and increase exposure, you actually decrease and increase saturation. So we're going to turn our exposure down. And because our leaves were kind of already overexposed, as we turn the 
exposure down, it's going to start adding saturation. So you can see that the greens look more saturated and kind of more lovely to begin with without having to adjust the saturation at all. But as we continue doing that, it's almost going to look like the saturation starts to leave at around eh, probably this point is max saturation. And then it gets darker and we're adding black to this area of the image. It's kind of like we're overlaying black on top of it and it's making it less saturated. So if you're ever wondering, how do I get saturated greens without making it look oversaturated? It's probably the brightness of those greens that you need to worry about and the white balance more than necessarily just adding saturation because simply lowering the exposure is going to give you the appearance of more saturated kind of poppy greens. So we'll take that back up to normal. And of course, if you wanted to get really precise about this, you take your exposure all the way down, do a super intense effect, and then you can see the areas that need to be refined. So we'll go in here, kind of address some of these, whether that's using our auto mask to try and grab a couple extra points. Oops. Just clicking on them until they go away or whether that's just going in here, zooming way in, grabbing our brush, fixing things manually. So there we go. Let's say that was cleaned up. I can just grab my effect to reset it, exposure down just a little bit. If you take it too far, it'll be too obvious, so let's just dial it back. Generally, when you're applying effects, I found, honestly, the best suggestion I can give you is take the effect to where you think it looks really good and then dial it back 10, 15, 20%. That way you don't run the risk of over editing and making it look unnatural just because you think in the moment it looks cool. It probably doesn't. In hindsight, you'll be like, why did I take that so far? So just take my advice from personal experience, take things to where you think looks good and then dial it back, you know, 25%. Okay, so that looks good. Before, after we've added some nice pop to the greens and contrast to the image. Okay, so that does it for our kind of overview of the adjustment brush and the different tools that are inside of it. Hopefully by now you're getting a really good sense of how that all works. One last thing that we could kind of brush on is, haha, pun intended, is the range mask, which has the option to mask by color and by luminance. So for the grass, for example, we could possibly try the color mask. So I'm going to go in here. Let's just say that my mask, I didn't want to mess around so much with the auto mask tool. I could just brush everything in this general area and then switch to a color mask. And then we're going to use this uh, little dropper thing to grab a point of the image that is indicative of what we're trying to mask. So let's go with just kind of a general green of this grass somewhere in there. And you can see it's found kind of that sort of color, looked for everything of that color and masked it out for us. Super handy. And we can actually increase the amount, which is basically more or less like how much outside of that exact shade do we want to mask. So we could say, give it a little bit of leeway, look for everything kind of in that same color family. It does a really good job of grabbing all the greens. And then we can grab our exposure and just see exactly how good of a job it's in fact done. And the problem with this is you can see that it hasn't done as good of a job, I don't think, overall as if we had just done the auto mask, but it also took a lot less time. Just a really basic mask and applying the color is a lot faster. And we can of course come in here and clean it up just like anything else. Go in here, erase off of her dress, Hold command so that I auto mask erase off her dress. So in certain situations, this might be happy, <laughs> happy. This might be helpful for you. In other situations, sometimes it's just easier to just do a normal mask. In fact, I find when I'm using an adjustment brush, I'm very rarely using the range masks. Just as a general rule, I tend to use a radial filter if I'm going to use a range mask rather than an adjustment brush, but that's okay. And then the illuminance mask, it's kind of something similar, but instead of targeting a specific color, you're targeting a specific brightness. So that's um, really helpful in examples where you want to just target the sky. So we could go back to our Saudi Arabia kind of photo here, reset everything. We'll just grab our brush and we'll do a really, really just basic brush over this entire skyline. Go to the range mask, luminance. We're going to set the range to the very top. So anything from say like 70 to 100. And you can see as I'm doing that, it's automatically masking out anything that is darker than that kind of max range. And we can adjust the smoothness based on how we want it to blend that mask in somewhere around there. So in this part particular case, if we press O, take our exposure way down, you can see it did a really great job. And then you can kind of dial it in with the smoothness to try and get a more natural looking effect. 
So is it better than just doing it manually? Sometimes, sometimes it absolutely is. And having that smoothness is really cool and you can get faster results. And that's really what this is all about too, is remembering the keyboard shortcuts and mastering these tools and knowing what to use in each situation because sometimes you don't need to use auto mask. Sometimes you don't need to use range mask. Other times it's going to save you a lot of time. So last of all, if you are using adjustment brushes, the best tip I can give you when it comes to batch editing your photos is to make use of adjustment brush presets. Local adjustment presets let you save these settings that you have here so that you don't have to do the same thing over and over and over again every time you want to do a similar edit. So for example, if I'm editing a portrait and I always find that I am doing the same thing when I'm you know, editing this portrait. I'm always adding a little bit of contrast and some texture to the hair. Well, I can actually save that as a preset. I can go up here to where it says custom, click that drop down, go down here to save current settings as new preset, and save that as Ryan's hair brush. Right? Now, whenever I have a portrait and I want to edit the hair and add a little bit of contrast and texture, all I have to do is go up to this effect, select that preset, and bam, I can do that without having to go in and manually adjust these sliders and get them right every single time. It'll save you a lot of time in the long run. And that's why when you buy a preset pack from our Signature Edits presets, well, we actually ship with all of these different presets that you can apply. Now, if you're using Lightroom CC, Lightroom CC doesn't actually have the ability to do local adjustment presets, which is too bad. Maybe they will add it in the future, but CC Classic and older versions of Lightroom all have this exact setup. So you can make use of these kind of presets when you're editing. So every time that you're editing nature photos, you can go to add texture when you want to add some texture to the um, to the grass or something like that. You can make a new adjustment brush and you can go down here and let's say that we want to, oh, I don't know, to a dreamy dehaze. This is a brush that I love using all the time. I use it more with a radial filter normally than with a local adjustment, but you can see we've just added some extra kind of nostalgia to the image, made it a little bit more dreamy and dehazy, as the name would suggest, make our subject pop up. We can go back in here, make a new brush, and we could, let's say this were a portrait instead of more of a kind of wide angle photo, we could go in here and go to the skin softener and paint on her skin if maybe she had some wrinkles showing up from the light or something like that. We could go on there and just airbrush her skin ever so slightly. So that's something that I would definitely suggest doing just to increase your workflow. Because not only is this going to save you a ton of time, it's also going to give you more consistent edits. If you're always consistently applying the same kind of effects from one image to the other, all the images in that set are going to match better than if you were just randomly adjusting these between your different photos. So that's a great tip for you that you can apply. Now, last and not least, let's talk about one little feature that most people aren't even aware is involved in the adjustment brushes, and that's this little triangle tool right here. So what we do when we hit this triangle tool is we uh, collapse that panel, which is great if you want a little bit more screen real estate, but mostly this is handy because you now have this hidden amount slider. So let's say that we were to go back to our dreamy dehaze kind of layer that we added on here, and it's just a little too strong. I don't want it to be quite so strong. Well, I can dial in the amount of that effect. So instead of having to manually go in here, and dial back the exposure, dial back the contrast, dial back the clarity for all of these different sliders, I just hit this little triangle and dial in the amount so I can raise it or lower the intensity of that effect. So that's just one last little trick for you to apply and that will really save you a lot of time as well because I know it's taken me a lot, a lot of extra hours in editing just trying to manually tweak these brushes when in fact I could have just done everything all at once with this one slider. And with that out of the way, you now officially know literally everything that I know about adjustment brushes. When it comes to using these brushes, I've given you all the tips, all the tricks, all of the shortcuts to speed up your workflow and your editing. So hopefully this tutorial has been helpful. If it was, do me a huge favor, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe for future content and leave me a comment below. I would love it if you would share your top tips and tricks and keyboard shortcuts. What's the most sh helpful shortcut you have learned when it comes to Lightroom? And do you find yourself using shortcuts? Why or why not? Okay, so please leave me that comment. Give me your feedback. I would love to hear from you if you have requests for future tutorials. And if you're looking for some free Lightroom presets, make sure to check the link in the description below. I'll give you some of those as well. All right, see you in the next video and peace.